Newly appointed director of the National Security Agency and Commander U.S. Cyber Command, General Paul Nakasone leads the official party during the opening of last week's 32nd Annual Military Order of the World Wars Massing of the Colors. More than 40 color guards participated in Fort Meade's annual Memorial Day observance. Hello and welcome to Meade Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, a lost World War II dog tag finds its way home. Volunteers needed for the red, white, and blue celebration. And Fort Meade is getting a lift. These stories and more, but first, as we watch scenes from Fort Meade's Memorial Day observance, it's a reminder that Memorial Day weekend is here and the traditional start of summer. And as they do every year at this time, the Installation Safety Office staged the annual Safety, Health, and Wellness Expo. More than 65 exhibits and vendors were on hand this year. The weather's getting warm, so with our stance, it's 101 critical days of summer safety. That's the start of it, up until Labor Day weekend. Um, it's big because now people are actually going outside. So with our event, basically composes of a lot of vendors from everybody. So you may just want to do household stuff. You got things in here with ladder safeties, with yards, with water safety, lawn mowers. You got recreational safety such as boating, skiing. Um, you got uh, industrial safety. You got the sports safety. You got folks dealing with everything from Zumba to working out, fitness trainers. Ferguson wanted to add a point of emphasis this year, saying that many people in the Fort Meade community are safe on the job, but maybe not as much at home. People see safety, they hear safety, they think of it as being an adversarial word. Safety is not adversarial. I like to see safety as being proactive as opposed to reactive. Because if you're safe, a lot of people are safe on their jobs, but not safe at home. So my thing is, you got to be safe year round and around the clock. So what I want people to get off from here is like, just because you're on here like a nine to five job time, after hours, you got to take safety home as well. For more on installation safety, go to our website at www.ftme.army.mil slash staff slash ISO slash safety. Meanwhile, it's rare that an item of personal value that's been lost for more than 70 years would ever find its way back home. In 2013, a French soldier walking near the Maginot Line in northeast France spotted a rusting strip of metal in the ground. He knew immediately it was a dog tag of an American soldier from World War II. The dog tag made its way to the local secretary of the Maginot Line Preservation Society. His name is Jean-Luc Fector. He's the cousin of Fort Meade's installation safety officer, Kirk Fector. The biggest thing that happened is genealogy. So uh, I grew up not knowing my uh, roots, and I put a thing on the internet, and my cousin said she had some inter information for me, and that information was a genealogy of 300 of my <laughs> ancestors and relatives uh, in the Fector family. So uh, one of those uh, lives in France, Jean-Luc Fector. It took several years of searching, but Fector, with help from some Air Force Intel folks and a local historian in West Virginia, found the grandson of Staff Sergeant Wallace Adkins. I couldn't believe it. I do genealogy, so you know I study that stuff a lot. And when they called me and told me they had this, it meant a lot. I mean, it meant a whole lot how it come about and everything. Yeah, I'm very happy. Wallace Adkins' son was also there, and he too was overcome. It's just hard to comprehend. Something like that, it's just, it's, it's just hard to understand how it happened. Little did Kirk Fector know that his own interest in genealogy would result in something like this. In other news, Lyft, the ride-sharing company, announced last week that they'll expand service to the Fort Meade community very soon. In a press release by Lyft, they're dedicated to collaborating with Fort Meade and military service organizations to identify and address innovative solutions to existing transportation barriers. That from Mike Heslin, the Baltimore market manager for Lyft. Lyft is currently recruiting and training drivers who will be specifically certified to provide rides on Fort Meade. For more information on Lyft service to Fort Meade, go to blog.lyft.com. In MWR news, they're looking for a bunch of volunteers to help with cleanup after this year's annual red, white, and blue celebration. It's coming up on June 29th. There are several shifts starting Friday, June 29th at noon. There are two more shifts through midnight Friday. Then on Saturday, more volunteers are needed for the final cleanup. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. We close with more from the Military Order of the World Wars Massing of the Colors. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great Memorial Day holiday and a great Mead Week.